If you sell a product online, then you know that your listing photos are of utmost importance, right? But most of us are not professional photographers and may not even really realize where to start when it comes to product photography. So I'm excited to share with you guys some tips and tricks that I've learned along the way in my six years on Etsy and some easy things you can do to level up your photography starting today. Hi again, friends. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Kate. I'm so glad you're here. I'm a wife, a mom, an Etsy seller, and a business coach, and I have this channel to help you succeed in your handmade business so that you can spend more time on what's important in life. On this channel, I talk about all things small business and selling products online. So if you're not already subscribed, I would love for you to do that. Just hit the little subscribe button and also make sure to tap the bell to turn on your notifications. So today I'm gonna to walk you through some of my best tips and tricks when it comes to product photography and the things I've done over the years to level up my photos and make them look a little more professional. So I'm excited to dive into those things with you, but first let's go ahead and hop over to the computer for our shop shout out of the week. Congratulations to Floree's Handmade. Thanks so much for being part of our channel family. Make sure to comment below for a chance for your shop to be featured on our next video. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is indoor versus outdoor. So you can take your product photos inside or outside and there's pros and cons to both. So you really just have to think through each one to realize which place will be the best setting for your photographs. So we're going to talk about outdoor first. So when you're thinking about taking your photos outdoors, we want to think about doing it on a sunny day. You definitely want there to be a lot of good natural light outside, the sun's in the sky, but you don't want it to be overexposed to where the picture looks like the sun is just shining right on it and it's, it's just too bright. It's a pretty sunny day here today, so I'm gonna take you guys out with me out into my backyard and we're gonna look for like a shady spot back there so that we have a lot of good natural light but it's not gonna be overexposed. So I found a really great shady spot on my back porch and I always like to look to see what direction the sun is coming in from just to make sure that there's no weird shadows that'll be cast on the product. And here I'm using just some pieces of white foam board which are really inexpensive Expensive. They're super easy to provide just a simple and clean background and I'm going to be using my phone today just to show you how easily this can be done just with a phone. So now I've moved indoors to show you that you can get a great picture indoors as well. And when you're taking a picture inside, you definitely need a source of natural light. So I'm here next to my open front door, letting some light in from the side. And I'm using both the textured surface of this cute little cart that I have, as well as the white foam boards to show some different backgrounds. So it's great to use a simple and clean background, but it can also be great if you have something like a desk or a surface that has a wood grain or a cute trendy color as as well. Okay, so now that we've talked about indoor and outdoor, we're gonna talk about the different types of images there are. And as we go through these different types, I want you to keep in mind that any of these can be styled either plain or lifestyle. So plain would be just a picture of the item itself. And then lifestyle would be the item with different things styled around it, like keys or keychain or some flowers or some greenery or a mug, something that just gives it a little more pop, a little more color and shows how it might be styled with other things in everyday life. In my opinion, it's great to have both plain and lifestyle pictures when you're setting up your Etsy listings. Okay, so the first type of image I wanna mention is a straight on image, and that's sort of what I've just been showing you that we took outside and just now inside. A straight on image is really good for any small items with details like text that you want people to be able to read or details that are shown on the front of the item like I had on the bracelet. A straight on image is taken right from the front. There's no angling down. It's right from the front. And it's also really great to be able to use depth of field. So if you're not familiar with what depth of field means, it's that blurry background look that a lot of professional photos have. The key to getting some good depth of field is to have your product in the foreground with some depth or some length behind it between itself and the background. Now, one thing you do wanna be careful of when you're taking on a straight on picture is if there's any line in the background that are going horizontal, you want to make sure that that line appears level. You don't want the picture to be crooked to where that background line looks like it's not level. You want it to be horizontal. And so a lot of times it's good to use if you have a tripod with a level on it to make sure you're holding the camera steady, to make sure you have it at a level spot so that that horizontal line actually appears to go straight across. You also want to make sure that whatever you're using for the background, if it's not just a plain color, you want to make sure that your background is not 
distracting. So if it's a lifestyle picture, it's okay to use something else for a background, like some leaves or bushes or trees or branches, but you just wanna make sure it's not too much to where it's distracting from the product. All right, image type number two is a flat lay. So I'm sure you've probably heard of this before. A flat lay is often used for apparel, like t-shirts or anything that can be laid flat on a surface. It's also really great for groups of items. So let's say you have spa items that you're selling as a bundle and they can all be laid out next to each other and you'll be taking the picture from overhead looking straight down. You don't want any angle. If it's coming at all from a side angle, it's not gonna look as professional. A flat lay should be straight from overhead. And the last thing I wanna mention for the flat lay is that you just wanna make sure that whatever surface is underneath that everything's on top of is a trendy looking surface. So again, like I used before the white poster board, you can do something plain that definitely works, it's not distracting, it's super easy. But if you're using an actual textured service or a desk or a table of some sort, you just wanna make sure it's not like a bright and distracting color. You want it to be trendy looking, you want it to be a nice neutral color that won't take away from the picture. All right, image number three is going to be taken with a light box. And y'all have heard me mention a light box before in my previous videos. A light box is super easy and simple to set up and it's pretty affordable if you're selling small items. It's mainly good for things like mugs, jewelry, keychains, like small things that could fit inside this box. The one thing I really love about using a light box is that it's so consistent. So you have the same lighting every time, you have the same setup every time. It's very simple to set up. It'll look the same each and every time you take a picture in the light box. I love the light box setup that I have. It came with two lights that just plug in that you put on the outside and it actually is awesome because it diffuses the light as it comes in so it evenly distributes it so it looks really nice every time. I would totally recommend this for an easy, simple setup for small things. Side note here, please make sure that your background material is smooth. I realize mine has a ton of wrinkles in it right now and if I really was taking product photos with this today, I would iron it first. Image number four is a model image. So this is an image with your product being shown, worn, or used by an actual person, a model. So I love model pictures because when the buyer is looking through the listing pictures, it's one thing to just see a plain picture of the product, but it's a totally different experience to see it being used by an actual person. Seeing it being worn or used gives the buyer the idea of what experience it might be to have this product, and it gives them a little bit of excitement. They think, wow, if she's having that much fun wearing that necklace, maybe I could too. We've learned before that buyers purchase a lot on emotion and the idea of an experience that might be possible for them. So being able to see it on a real person really takes it to the next level for that buyer to go ahead and make the transaction. When you're getting pictures of your product on a model, it's great to have some up close and some farther away. You just wanna have a great variety of different types of images for your buyer to look through. An easy way to get some great model pictures is to think of some family and friends that might be willing to help you in exchange for free items. So you don't even have to pay them a lot of times. If you have people that wanna support you and help you, they you might be willing to pose for a couple pictures using your products if you just let them keep one of the items at the end. And the final type of image I want to talk about is a mock-up. So you may be familiar with mock-ups, but mock-ups are basically just a template picture that if you're selling something like a graphic design on a t-shirt or a mug, whatever your product is, you can actually buy the mock-up image and use it as a template and it's blank. So you just put your design right on it. It's super easy, super simple, especially if you don't feel confident in your photography skills yet, you can actually just purchase a mock-up. If you're gonna purchase the mock-up, there are a lot of great places to find them. My personal favorite is Creative Market. I've used Creative Market for a lot of different things, but I love their variety of mock-up options because they're very professional looking, they're very affordable. So if you think you might be interested in using some mock-ups, I'll link Creative Market down below for you. Of course, you can always create your own mock-ups to use, and that would just be a picture that you're taking yourself, like maybe a flat lay or something similar, where you take a picture of a blank shirt or a blank mug, whatever your product is, so that you can use it. And then on your computer design program, you just add your graphic design right onto it. Okay, so now that we've talked about the different types of images, one other thing I do wanna note is that after you take your images, you always need to edit them. It can just be some small, simple edits, but you definitely need to edit your pictures to make sure that they look bright enough, that they look clear enough, and that they're cropped right. So there's a lot of techniques you can get into when you talk about photo editing, but I'm assuming most of us are beginners, just like I was when I first started. So I wanna go over the very, most basic, easy, two things you can do to edit your photos. Now you can do a lot of things on Photoshop 
and Lightroom, so it's great. If you have those apps, you can go way further with this. But I'm gonna show you how to do it on just your phone, quick and easy, with brightness and crop. Okay, so when I'm editing, I'm just gonna click edit on the photo, and I'm gonna do the brightness first. I'm gonna scroll over to brightness and adjust it as bright as I want it. And then I'm gonna work on the crop a little bit. Sometimes I might want to make it appear more zoomed in, so I just go to the crop feature, and you can play around with it until you get the crop right, and it looks at about the ratio that you want. Okay, there's just a couple last things I wanna mention that are really important for product photography. One specifically for Etsy is that if you have items with details, you wanna make sure to have some up close images of those details. And you also wanna make sure to have pictures from different angles so that the buyer can get a really good feel for what that product is, what it looks like, and how it can be used. Important note number two is that you don't wanna have watermarks on your photos. I see this a lot on Etsy and I cringe a little bit because people don't realize how distracting watermarks on your photos can be. It definitely takes away from the picture itself and it makes it less clickable. So I understand the desire to put watermarks on your photos to try to protect them, but it's not worth it at the end of the day if it's deterring the buyer from clicking on your listing. Important thing number three is that you have to be careful of reflections, especially if you're taking pictures with anything glass. So one example of this is when I first started taking pictures, I had a glass front door that I was taking pictures of my wreaths on. And it wasn't a terrible front door but the glass made the reflection really bright and really distracting and I could never really figure out a way to take a good picture on it so you just want to make sure that if you're using anything glass in your pictures that you figure out how to do it without seeing yourself in the reflection or you might just want to figure out something else that you can use instead of the glass door or the glass frame whatever it might be I want to encourage you guys to start simple with what you have and level up as you go so most of us don't have the budget probably to invest in a lot of nice photography equipment right in the beginning, and that's okay. Just use your phone, use what you have, and just use some simple editing techniques. You can still get the job done that way, and then you can always level up. You can learn new techniques as you go. You can invest in better equipment as you go, but it's okay to start simple. When I first started, I had a super old phone, which I used, and it got the job done, and then as I went along, I was able to invest in some lighting and a better camera, and so now I'm able to use my Canon, which is great because it has options for that depth of field and the blurry background like we talked about and exposure and different things. And so I've been able to learn along the way. And if you do have a budget for something like that and you're ready to take that next step maybe, I have it linked down below if you're interested to see the camera I use. But either way, you can do it on your phone or you can use some nice equipment. You can get the job done either way. Out of all the different elements that we talk about as far as your Etsy listings and how to level up your shop, I would say that photography is at the top of the list for sure. If you're gonna spend time investing in anything to try to up your game a little bit, photography is the first place to start. So really hone in, really listen to these techniques and take it seriously and put some time into making your photographs look more professional and more appealing and you will not be sorry, I promise. Okay friends, that's all the photography tips for today. Today. But before you go, I have a really exciting announcement, which is that we are going to be doing a massive giveaway soon. We are almost to 20,000 subscribers. We're super excited to hit that 20,000 mark. And when we get there, we are going to be putting together a big bundle of our merch items. So some of you may have seen our merch. We recently launched a whole line. You probably see the merch shelf somewhere on this video right now. But if not, it'll be linked below if you're interested to see what our items are. But when we reach 20,000 subscribers, we're going to pick one one lucky winner for a whole bundle of our merch items. So help us get there faster by sharing this video, sharing any of our other videos. We're super excited to have this community with you guys. We've had so much fun getting to this point already and we appreciate any kind of engagement and sharing that you can give us to help us reach that goal faster. Also, if you're interested in any more Etsy strategy or tips, just click or tap on the square on the screen right now and it'll take you to another video just like this one. See you next time, friends.